So, I, yeah, I don't know if it's like my dream world. I would say, I, I think what will likely happen, right, is that the technology is moving so fast that likely in the next five to ten years, sequencing will become so easy and facile that everyone will be sequenced. Um, and, uh, you know, and we'll start sequencing in lots of different organisms on Earth. And we'll understand everything that is exists in our genomes, right? And that's only just the tip of the iceberg because there's so much other stuff going on that we are yet to understand. But the genome will tell us, you know, what are all the different variations that are important and that have evolved over time, that even if they haven't actually morphed through chance even, that affect different physical characteristics, our risk for diabetes and hypertension and um, macular degeneration, and that they'll basically point us to all of the different uh, important pathways involved in disease um, and survival. And from there, actually, the question just begins, because then we'll have to understand, well, you know, what to make of all those changes and what can we do biologically to help that? So if it's something that, you know, we find something important in diabetes, how do we develop therapeutics for it? If it's something that is important for malaria, how do we, that protects from malaria, how do we mimic that in a therapeutic? So um, it's really just a point of launching, a launching point to then for a lot more exploration. But, you know, and there are definitely... Um, so it's an exciting time to understand how and how we're all related, how those, how the, how, what are all the variations that we have, how are those variations important functionally. So, um, and I think that the most important thing is through that process that we have really clear ethical and cultural standards that we do it in a, an appropriate way. So I remember in that book, uh, sorry, in the, in the movie Contact, Jodie Foster's asked, like, what was the one question that you would ask? I thought it was really you know, a lot of times movies have really poignant moments, but, you know, they said if you got to meet the higher life, what would you ask? And the big question was, how did you do it? How did you go through this transition to technology and not destroy yourself? And I think that that's an important question to ask all the time, is how do we go through these points where we have all of this information and we don't somehow use it in a way that's dangerous? What is good is that the scientific community is, you know, a few things that have happened, you know, recently have pointed us to the dangers of this kind of information. And so there are a lot of people that are circling around the ethical issues of understanding uh, ourselves and the differences between human populations and information about our own genes that could be important. So, uh, yeah, I think that there are a lot of people taking it very seriously. And so, and, and more and more ethics training is coming into graduate work. Um, so that, you know, both in the ethics of how we conduct research and then the ethics of the information that we get. Um, so I think there's a lot of people focused on it. My, the institute, I'm at the Broad Institute, I've always really respected the way that they do it. They're very into the public, uh, making all of their data publicly available, engaging the community. We, you know, we put a lot of our efforts towards communications so that people understand. We never, we try not to, obviously. Um, overstate what we do. We try to engage the community and be careful about a lot of cultural sensitivities. So I appreciate that uh, I would say Eric Lander and David Altshuler, who are leading in these efforts of studying genomics and human variation, take it very, very seriously and very cautious about it. And But it's not just there. That's just where I work. But a lot of people in the community that, that find it important. <laughs>